Hello everyone, uh, this is a lecture on differential calculus. Uh, we're going to start by defining a variable as any quantity or parameter that uh, changes its value. When a parameter can have its own different values, then we say it's a variable. Example is height. Uh, the height of a tree can be 10 meter now and later becomes uh, 12 meter. So it has changed its value, so it's a variable. Other examples of variables are age and time. Uh, we say a variable is an independent variable if it's, uh, it changes its value on its own. If there is nothing responsible for, for the change in its value. Example is uh, time. Time will always change its value uh, on its own. If it's 11 a.m. now, it becomes 12 noon. Uh, Nobody is responsible for the change. So we say a variable is dependent variable if it's, it, it can only change when another variable has changed. So the example is uh, age. Uh, the age of uh, an individual will only change when time has changed. Uh, so we take, we define a function as uh, so any arrangement that takes in variables or variables and produce or, or brings out a, a dependent variable. Uh, you can look at your college as example of a function and uh, students going in as variables. Uh, they will come in with uh, high school cert, school certificates and uh, come out with a diploma. So anything that goes into a function will be transformed by that function. Uh, other examples of functions are uh, one, the displacement of a body will only happen when time has changed. So no single body. Uh, the body cannot be at two different positions at the same time. It can't be at Yaba and be at at the same time. Time has to change for a body to change its location. Uh, so we say displacement is a function of time. Also, the, the length of the material has different values at uh, various temperatures. So the length of the people in construction industry are very familiar with this. So they know that uh, at different temperatures, uh, in material we have different uh, sizes, different lengths. So they make allowances for this because length is a function of surrounding temperature. So example, these two examples are example of linear function. Linear in the sense that um, there is a constant and uniform uh, factor that possesses the result of that function. Uh, so the third example here is area of its surface determined by its uh, radius. That means uh, if a, the radius of a circle is small, the area will be small. If the radius of a circle is large, the area will be large. Uh, another example here is the position of an electron in a waveform is a probabilistic function of time, momentum, and a spin. This is a wave function. And uh, this is a complex function, just to tell you that we can have a simple function and we can also have a complex function. Uh, so, differentiation of a function. When we differentiate a function, what we seek is to find the factor that makes a function produce different results uh, for each variable. Why will a uh, student come out of the college with a distinction and another will come out with ordinary pass? What is the factor that is responsible for that? Uh, so if the function is a linear function, such factor is, uh, will be the same all throughout or be a single factor. So for a linear function, you have the factor that makes a particle to be at a point A at time T1 and to be at point B at time T2. Uh, each T1 and T2, they are function of uh, the difference is a function of time. It's the velocity. So the velocity is what of a body is what is relevant for its uh, change in location. And we we find that by dividing the change in displacement over change in time. So whenever we divide the uh, change in dependent variable by change in the independent variable, we get the constant factor that is responsible for the uh, for the change in the result of the function. Uh, we can illustrate this on a graph. It's also called the slope of that graph, so of the function. So for a linear function now, we have at point uh, time t1, the body is at point a, and, and that's a display of a f of t1. And at time t2, the body is at point b, this is a function of t2. So, uh, therefore, the uh, the slope of the curve of the line is f of t2 minus f of t1, and that's displacement, the change in displacement all over change in time is t2 minus t1. So, an example of that is. Um, uh, example of that is uh, 
So if you are t1 at t1, t1 is 5 seconds, the displacement is uh, 1.5 meter. And uh, at t2, the displacement is uh, uh, 4.5 meter. And 10 seconds later, the displacement has changed, has changed to 4.5. So the slope of the of the of the function, the slope of the function will be computed by saying 4.5 minus 1.5. That means changing displacement all over changing time. That's 10 seconds. So uh, 4.5 minus 1.5 is 3. 3 divided by 10 is 0.3 meters per second. So the velocity of the body is 0.3 meters per second. That means the body is changing its position by a factor of 0.3. So we can now write in general that the displacement as a function of time is 0.3 t. Uh, what this can help us is that if you want to know what will be the uh, displacement of the body in, when time is uh, at time t equals to 20 seconds. We just multiply 0.3 by 20 seconds. So that will be 6 meter. So we can easily find what the displacement of the body or what the time will be when we know one of the uh, variables. Uh, so another linear uh, uh, factor is the linear expansivity. Uh, the change in length uh, divided by change in temperature. Write as L2 minus L1 divided by T2 minus T10, change in temperature. We also write the change as delta. Delta L divided by delta T. The delta is written as a triangular symbol, a symbol of a triangle. So the change in length divided by change in temperature is a constant factor multiplied by the original length. The, that constant factor alpha is called the uh, linear expansivity of the material. Each material has its own. A concrete has its own uh, linear expansivity. Uh, iron has its own, steel has its own. So it's a constant factor for every material. So when the function is not linear, uh, so uh, the factor will not be constant and not be uniform. An example here, the area of a circle is a function of the radius. So we know from the uh, formula for area of a circle is parallel square. So when the area of a uh, when the radius is two units, the area uh, is a, a four pi square units. And when the radius is three units, the area will be nine pi square units. Uh, you see that when you find the change in this uh, temperature, uh, change in this function, uh, f three minus f two, uh, that's uh, 5 uh, pi divided by 1 is not uniform. So it won't be the same thing when you subtract uh, f4 minus uh, f3 because it's not a uniform, uh, it's not a linear function. So the uh, every point on the function has different factor. If uh, everyone has a factor of its own, the factor that makes it change. So what we do here is that we find, uh, uh, you can always look at this as a uh, uh, the reason why someone comes goes into the college and comes out with decision, another one goes into the college and come, comes out with a uh, pass, is itself a function of uh, the high school they attended or the homes they come from. So when there is reason for a function to produce different results, it's already it's itself a function. So the reason why the function producing different results is another function. So that function, uh, that another function is called the gradient function. So we can find that function. So, so we find we can find a function that function that gradient function which defines what the result will be for all the points. So uh, an easy way to approach to do this is that we we call that um, uh, we use the limit approach to find a tangent to a curve. So if a function that is not linear it is always a curve. It won't be a straight line. So what we do is that. Um, we draw a straight line that only touches at one point. That's it. A tangent to that curve. And it touches at only one point. But you know, for us to find the, uh, the, the slope of a line, we need two points. But this line is only touching at one point. So that's why we're going to use limit approach. If we draw the line to cut it at two points, it's not going to be a tangent. Because it's going to be a, a second. And that will only find average of just two points. When the limit approach, if you want the video on limit, you know, in the limit, uh, we are we are looking for the uh, we are talking of of real number now. We are not we are looking for the way the, the behavior of the function as it's getting to a particular point. 
so it doesn't have to get there so so each of these lines they are real lines so between any two points on the line there are infinite number of points uh, so uh, so we now pick uh, a distance h from the points uh, where the line touches this the curve so in finding the limit now so the difference now uh, the with the tangent the point at which the point at which we take on the on the curve is f of x so we now find f of x of f of x plus h that means a little positive number h away from the point of contact uh, the reason for this is that uh, there are infinitely number of points between uh, as x is moving towards h uh, as uh, x is uh, h is moving towards zero h is becoming very small uh, as h is becoming very small if means that h cannot be zero because if h becomes zero now we have f of x minus f of x over zero so that will be uh, on undetermined indeterminate so h will not assume zero but we are looking uh, this essence is that uh, the function will always behave the same way uh, when it's approaching uh, uh, when it's infinitely approaching uh, the point a particular point on the curve so this can give us the nature of the of the, the behavior of the curve as it is approaching uh, every other point so this is now the uh, differential of the function so we said limit h tends to zero f of x plus h minus f of x over h so as h is moving towards zero and it will never come to zero uh you watch the video on limits how we what we define limits to be it's moving towards that point but you never get it but on the movement towards that point is going to tell us the nature of the of the function as the fun as as the the nature of uh, the what is going to be the terminal position of the function um, but it, mo it must not get there so it gives us opportunity to have, find as many points as possible close to uh, the point of x so that, so that the that will now produce our differential of uh, f of x we write as f prime of x so that's a uh, divide yes so this is called the differentiation from the first principle Okay, so the of problem is limit h tends to zero f of x plus h minus f of x all over h that means we are differentiating uh, we are subtracting the function uh, at point x uh, from the function at value very close to the point x and we are taking the limit as that small positive number h is going to become zero so uh, the rate of change is the differential of uh, uh, the rate of change of uh, of uh, radius with respect to to uh, the rate of change of area with respect to radius of a of a circle. Now it's going to be the differential of the radius, uh, the differential of the area. And so f of f prime of r so is limit h tends to zero f of r plus h minus f of r over h so you remember the uh, the formula for area of a circle is a pi r square so anywhere we see r in the formula we put r plus h so pi into bracket of r plus h all square minus pi r square uh, over h uh, take the limit as h tends to zero so if you open that bracket you have a r square plus 2 r h uh, plus h square then we multiply through by pi so we have pi r square plus uh, 2 pi r h plus pi h square then minus pi r square that, that which is the f of r so when we subtract pi r square we cast pi r square so we'll be having uh, uh, limit h tends to 0 pi h into bracket of 2 r plus h so we factor pi h out of the two remaining terms so we divide by h h is a numerator is also dividing so we divide h we divide put up and down by h so we have pi uh, into 2r plus h limit h tends to zero so the pi can now multiply through so we have 2 pi r plus pi h so when h becomes zero now uh, so we now have uh, when h gets to zero 
you may have uh, get uh, when a becomes zero so you have two pi r two pi r a pi times zero is zero so you sit down you now notice that the, the rate of change of uh, uh, area with respect to radius now is the diameter of the circle rate of change of area of a circle with respect to the radius is the diameter of that circle uh, so uh, this is a worked example that to differentiate from the first principle uh, square root of 1 plus i so the f prime of i which is differential of the function f of x which, which is a uh, 1 plus 1 square root of 1 plus h is limited tends to 0 square root of 1 plus x plus h uh, minus f of x which is square root of 1 plus x all over h so that's the differential so what we now do is to simplify the function to evaluate the limit so the limit x tends to h uh, this is in the third form so we have to rationalize by multiplying both up and down by the conjugate of the numerator if the numerator involves odd so the conjugate of the numerator is square root of 1 plus x plus h uh, plus square root of 1 plus x so uh, when we multiply the numerator, square root of 1 plus x plus h multiplied by square root of 1 plus x plus h, it will produce a 1 plus x plus h. Then we multiply the other two factor in terms, they will cancel each other because one is minus and the other is plus. So what will be left with um, square, minus square root of 1 plus x multiplied by plus square root of 1 plus x. So that will, will give us uh, minus the bracket of 1 plus x. For the denominator, we just use the h to multiply square root of 1 plus x plus h plus uh, square root of 1 plus x. That will give us uh, h uh, into square root of uh, h multiplied by square root of 1 plus x plus h plus uh, square root of 1 plus x. So when we open up the numerator, the minus will go through. So we have a minus 1 and minus x. So the minus 1 will cancel the minus 1 and the minus x will cancel the plus x. So we have the h left at the numerator. So we have limit h tends to 0, h divided by h into square root of 1 plus x plus h plus square root of 1 plus x. So the h will cancel the h. So we'll be left with the limit h tends to 0, 1 all over square root of uh, 1 plus x plus h plus uh, square root of 1 plus x. So now as h, is, you can completely put the value of x uh, h for 0 now. So I'm putting this, we have a uh, 1 plus x square root of uh, 1 plus x plus square root of 1 plus x equals to 1 over 2 square root of 1 plus x. So that means the, the gradient function of uh, the function 1 plus square root of 1 plus x is a uh, 1 all over uh, 2 into square root of uh, 1 plus x. So it's not all the time that uh, we can differentiate from the first principle. So there are formulas that we can use to differentiate different types of function. So for so the, uh, the following result follows from uh, the first principle of differentiation. Now for algebraic function, if y equals to a subscript n uh, x raised to power n uh, plus a subscript n minus 1 x raised to power n minus 1 up to uh, a subscript 1 x plus a subscript 0 x raised to power 0. Uh, this is an algebraic function with powers of n. So all the a n, a subscript n, a subscript n, they are all real numbers. They are constant because the, their values will not change. The variables we have here are x as the independent variable and y as the dependent variable. So on differentiating them, what we have is that the powers on the x you come and multiply the coefficient a ends, a subscript ends. So and you take one away from the powers. So that means that uh, a n x raised to power n, a subscript n x raised to power n, the n as the index we come and multiply the a n, then we have x raised to power n minus one. So one would drop from the power. Similarly, a sub n minus one multiplied by x raised to power n minus one. The n minus one will come and multiply a sub n minus one, and uh, we have a x x n raised to power minus one minus one. Now be n raised to power minus two. Similarly, like that, when we get to uh, the, the part of the function a one a sub one x, the power on the x there is uh, one. So one multiplied by a a1, a, a sub 3, 1 will be a sub 3, 1. Then 1 minus 1 on the power will be 0. A number is power 0 is 1. So that means that uh, we'll be left with a sub 3, 1. Then for the a 
surface zero. Uh, that's a constant factor because x raised to power zero is one, so it's not it often it's not often written. So the derivative of the constant is uh, zero because x raised to power zero will come and multiply a raised a naught, so that will produce zero. So the derivative of a constant will always give a uh, zero. So so therefore the differential we sum up all the this uh, the differential of each individual function is the sum of the each of the differentials. So uh, for duration of trig functions, uh, duration of sine, we can show from the first principle as well that duration of sine is cos, duration of cos is minus sine, duration of tan x is uh, sec square x, duration of sec cosec x is uh, minus cosec x cot x, duration of uh, sec x is uh, sec x times x, duration of cot x is minus cos square x. So similarly for inverse trig functions, uh, uh, differential of uh, inverse x, inverse sine inverse x or arc sine x is uh, 1 all over square root of 1 minus x squared. Uh, differential of uh, cos inverse x, which is arc cos x, is minus 1 all over square root of 1 minus x squared. Note that the difference between the differential of arc inverse and cos inverse is minus. The cos has minus, negative minus and the sine does not. The differential of arc tan x is uh, 1 all over. 1 plus x squared and differential of uh, sec inverse x uh, ax, ax sec x is 1 over x square root of x squared minus 1 differential of cos cosec inverse x is minus 1 over x square root of x squared minus 1 notice the difference here too the negative and uh, differential of cot inverse x is in, uh, minus 1 over uh, 1 plus x squared the value between cos inverse tan uh, uh, inverse cot inverse x and the uh, uh, tan inverse x is a uh, minus. Uh, the cot cotangent inverse has minus and the tan inverse does not have a negative sign. So uh, so techniques used in a uh, differentiation. Uh, the following techniques uh, comes handy in differentiation. So let u and v be any two functions of x. Then uh, for chain rule, uh, we have that uh, y equals to u. That means y is a function of u and u itself is a function of x. So if you now want to move from y to x, uh, that means we want to have a result of the y, differential of y with respect to x. This is a composite function. Uh, y is a function of, uh, u is a function of uh, y is a function of u and u itself is a function of uh, x so to, to now have to now link from y to x now the y dx now is first of all we differentiate y with respect to u multiply by the version of uh, u with respect to x that will now give us uh, the, the differential of uh, y with respect to x then for the product true given that y equals to uh, u multiplied by v we are u and v are both functions of x then the uh, differential of y with respect to x will be that uh, we hold the first function u differentiate v with respect to x then we hold the v and differentiate the u with respect to x then we have the results together then we, for the quotient true if y equals to uh, u divided by v we are u and v are both functions of x the differential of y with respect to x will be that uh, we hold the denominator uh, v and we differentiate the numerator with respect to x minus we now hold the numerator and differentiate the denominator with respect to x then all everything all over the different uh, the denominator all squared so let's have this work the example uh, we differentiate square root of x squared plus 1 all over x squared plus 3 so we look at it we use the chain rule we can first of all first of all we write the function as an um, uh, in index form square root means power of half so we write as y equals to uh, x squared plus 1 over x squared plus the ultimate power of half uh, because of the square root square root is power of half so we now use a um, uh, chain rule we look at x squared plus 1 over x squared plus three as one single u so as one single uh, term so half will come and multiply and we take one away from the fact from the half from the index so we have half into bracket of x squared plus 1 all over x squared plus 3 so half minus 1 will become minus half so that means that's uh, our du 
divide the u. Divide the u will be half into bracket of x squared plus 1 all over x squared plus 3 all to the power of minus half. Then for our du dx, we want to differentiate the u inside with respect to x now. So that will give us uh, the, 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 the function inside itself is, is another, is a, we're going to apply quotient rule to differentiate because the uh, is, uh, x squared plus 1 is being divided by x squared plus 3. So we hold the bottom x squared plus 3 and differentiate the top. The expression of 2x, yeah, x raised power 2 is 2x. Uh, x raised power 2 and the expression of plus 1 is 0. The, two, the difference of, two, of x squared is 2 because 2 come and multiply the coefficient of x. The difference of x there is 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. Then the power will take 1 away from it, which is 2 minus 1. So that is 1. So the difference of x squared plus 1 is 2x. So we hold the denominator. Once again, we hold the denominator. We differentiate the numerator. That's 2x. Then this time around, we, we hold the numerator. This time, x squared plus 1. And differentiate the denominator. The value of the numerator, x squared plus 3 will also give a 2x. Then everything divided by uh, the denominator all squared. This x plus x squared plus 3 all squared. So what we are just to do now, this is differential. All we just need to do is to simplify. So we have a half into bracket of a, uh, the minus half here will become plus. We, turn, we reciprocate it. Uh, minus means division by 1. The power of minus means division by 1 divided by the uh, also by uh, the by the base, so we reciprocate one divided by x squared plus one over x squared plus three will be x squared plus three. What is the denominator will come numerator uh, divided by x squared plus one the power of five. Then for the uh, the other part of uh, the the u dx, we open up the bracket two x multiplied by x squared will give us a two x cube. Then two x multiplied by three will be six x. Then minus 2x multiplied by x squared, all of the minus become 2 minus 2x cubed. Then 2x multiplied by minus 1 become minus 2x. So the minus 2x cubed will cancel the plus 2x cubed. So what we'll be having, what we have left here will be 6x uh, minus 2x, which should be 4x. So divided by the denominator, which is still x squared plus 3 all squared. So uh, the half here, uh, we come and divide 4x, so we have 2x as the numerator. Then the x squared plus 3 is common here, and x squared plus 2 is also here. The x squared plus 2 is having the power of 2, but that 2 is the, the power is, is divided, so it's minus 2. And x squared plus uh, 3 here is having the power of half. So half, uh, we, we can use law of indices and subtract 2 from half, from we subtract the powers. Half minus 2 will give us uh, minus 3 over 2. And x squared is power half. This is already divided, so it means square root of over square root of uh, x squared plus one. So the final result will be two x all over square root of x squared plus one. Then uh, square root of uh, three over two will produce the over two will make it uh, uh, x squared plus three square root. Then three is uh, uh, the power will be three. Uh, since the three over two means uh, the over two will be the square root, so we'll be left with the three as the power. So the result once again is a 2x all over square root of x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 3 all cube. Uh, this is a good example that has made use of um, uh, uh, differential of uh, algebraic terms. It has also made use of um, uh, chain rule and also the quotient rule. So that's, that's it. Thanks for watching.